Best infantry pairings between epic and legendary commanders. Rather you want to put epic first or you want to put legendary first, I'm going to give you the best pairings there is so you can get the most out of your infantry commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Rise of Kingdom video. My name is Legend Ronnie and today I'm going to talk about epic commanders and legendary commanders for your infantry marchers so you can make pairings between epic and legendary because you're wondering why. Like once you reach Season of Conquest, a lot of people are saying that epic commanders have no utilities and are probably no longer so useful. But there is a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. KVK 1 to 3 now is very paced up, which means that it's not going to take long before you reach Season of Conquest. But like your, your kingdom and like a lot of players in your kingdom, there is a lot of other kingdoms that are in the same situation. So you have a very high chance of meeting other Season of Conquest kingdoms that are in the same situation of your kingdom, like not having enough commanders so you can just go with Legendary on the field. And for that reason, you have to do some Epic Commanders as well, or at least you have to do a mix. Like putting some Epic Commanders as a second in command to some of your Legendary because you want to bring more marches on the field. Especially the starting murder ball is very important where numbers count, right? If things are gonna pan out later on and for example it becomes to a flag fighting where there is just 20-30 marches and obviously they will just target the weaker marches, then you can probably stop using those marches and just bring out your legendaries. But when is the big big murder ball, the big giant fight that at the beginning then you can bring as many marchers as you can as long as you're not lagging and you're paying attention to your marchers because you can definitely help out your team. So I hope that makes sense, the reason of these marchers. These marchers will also help you a lot in KVK 1, 2 and 3 because they include a lot of epic commanders. Before I'm going to go further into the video, there is uh, two things I want to mention about. One is make sure you join my Discord if you're interested about talents. On my Discord you have all the commanders listed specifically for each commander. You have the talent trees. It's very easy. Free access. You just click on the channel with the commander that you're interested in and you see the talent tree. The second thing is the most important part of KVK is field fighting. You're probably wondering why do I have the champions of Olympia in the background? Because a lot of you did not think about it. But this event is the best event where you can learn how to field fight for free. As long as this event is up, for free you can join on this event and you can learn how to field fight. Because you can play at any time, at any hour, as long as the event is up. And you're probably wondering why am I saying this. I'm gonna post two pictures on the top and that might change your mind why I'm talking about this or I probably already posted the pictures. Well, I'm showing you that epics can beat legendary. I'm showing you that four ounces of pressure applied correctly can move a thousand pounds. So I hope that tells you a lot regarding that. Going back to our commander pairings, we have Bjorn Ironside, which obviously right now is uh, one of the commanders that everyone is talking about. He's the newish epic commander that we have. And personally, I'm more hyped about him than I am about his father, Ragnar. <laughs> <laughs> the son is better than the father. We also got Sun Tzu for infantry, which I'm also going to talk a lot about him. And in the mix, I might introduce Eulji Mundog because KVK 1, 2 and 3, it does involve a lot of epics and Eulji Mundog will definitely have utility, especially at the beginning of the game. So for example, right when you start off the game and you like infantry, my advice in my opinion that the best epic pair that you can start with is for field fighting is Bjorn Ironside primary and Sansu as a second in command. Now the first first epic you should start with I've done a video about it where I talked about the Viking civilization the breakdown of the Viking civilization and um, you can go ahead and check that video because I also mentioned like what is the civilization that you should choose at the start, like when you start playing the game. Now going further than that, I'm talking about field battling marches right now. So Bjorn Ironside primary with Sansu as a second in command. Because Bjorn Ironside, once you obtain his expertise, he's debuffing up to three targets to get increased skill damage. And then Sansu does AoE. So for that matter, this is a very nice combination. Bjorn also has the skill talent tree. 
so it brings a lot of uh, buffs and bonuses to the skill damage plus 20 percent skill damage bonus from the four skill of Sansu. this pair is probably one of the most nicest epic pairs there is right now in rise of kingdoms and it's with infantry which obviously are a little bit more tankier than most of the other troops so there you have it out of the option or if you want to make two pairs of infantry that's where you can include eulji but i will be very honest once kvk1 has passed i wouldn't include eulji in the armies it used to be eulji and cpo used to be a very nice second infantry pair because they are both tank and infantry cpo also has his primary skill but it's just not working so well so for the kvk1 you can include eulji but if you want to go further as an epic pair for kvk2 and 3 then you definitely can go with bjorn and sansu now putting epics primary that are usually a target in kvk1 you're out of options there's nothing you can do so you do have to play with epics so most likely you're gonna put bjorn first or, or sansu or eulji first or some of the other commanders if you're do doing cavalry or what else but i'm talking about infantry and you will definitely use epic first but once you get your kvk2 you're definitely getting some stars you're definitely getting some skills on your commanders and you'll start leveling up your richard you'll start leveling up your charles martel 5511 charles martel is good to go richard 5111 now you have the skill lock system so you can just uh, unlock his other skills and then you can slowly work on him is same with charles martel 511 you can unlock his skills and then with the skill lock system you can just lock and work on his second skill and same with richard and then on his third skill so you can slowly slowly upgrade your commanders now very nicely with the skill lock system without having any issues once you get the legendaries to five star i would put the legendaries first it might sound very crazy but once you reach your five star and level 50 you have enough talents to build a very nice talent tree but once you unlock your six star obviously you have access to all the talents and that's when legendaries will shine especially richard charles martel and then later on you're gonna unlock your constantine which has the support tree and the support tree is very nice because one problem you're gonna have in kvk 2 and 3 is that epic being a target so myself with my alt account i was using kra first which obviously is an epic kind of 8 out of 10 was a target but i didn't mind because i was always controlling it i was going back and forth back and forth and i was also tanking a little bit with it because i was mostly demolishing because i usually like to play with a lot of skill damage so my kra it wasn't such a soft target and that's why legendaries come into play because these commanders are well known for being very defensive and being able to soak up a lot of damage and players tend to go for a minamoto for a ysg for an l seed or various other soft targets that um, players tend to use in kvk2 and 3 maybe even an alexander primary it might be something even more easier to go down people are looking for kills right and that's what you're looking for as well so once you get your richard up and you get your charles martel up you're probably wondering how you should uh, pair your your commanders i have seen that uh, alexander with bjorn was able to take down a sadin and william now obviously william is a season of conquest commander not kvk 1 2 and 3 so there you have it one on one alex and bjorn took down sadin and william which honestly i was very surprised sadin was 5551 but william was max skill and bjorn is an epic commander but I'm guessing that is the instant damage, so it was all based on luck. Because Alexander has instant damage, Bjorn has instant damage as well on his uh, third or fourth skill. Let's have a look. That is his fourth skill. Another 800. So a lot of RNG can be involved going one-on-one. -on -one. But this can tell you that even on the field it can be a very nice pair, but also pretty squishy. Because the only defense that you have is from Alexander, you have the shield and while you have the shield you have more defense or this 10 percent defense from bjorn which is not so high also from the talent tree from infantry you get a little bit more defensive option but i would prefer to have something more solid leading on being defensive like if that's what you want like having defensive marchers then 
I would probably go with a Charles Martel and um, a Sansu or a Charles Martel and Bjorn. Charles Martel being primary or you can also go with a Richard and Bjorn or a Richard and Alex. And uh, you can do a Charles Martel and Sansu and you can probably do a Constantine and Bjorn. So that way you are hiding the epics behind the legendary. That way you have less chances that your epics will be a target. What personally I would do, I wouldn't be afraid to use the epics first. And why is that? Because one, I, when I fight or when I do field fighting, I always use 50% expansion. So my army capacity is always high, which makes a difference. So that way you can go with epics first. And you also need to have very good equipment on your commanders for example not necessarily legendary but as much defense and health as possible on your infantry marchers so you're noticing that i have a lot of epics and blues and obviously if i show you further on my ether fled you can have gloves and you, ha you can have chest pieces which gives you even more defense so you can empower your infantry further on being even more defensive with the equipment as well so you can go with a Sansu primary or a Bjorn primary, but you need to play very carefully. Me personally, I would definitely play like that. I would definitely try um, Bjorn primary and an Alex second or an Alex uh, primary and a Bjorn second or a Sansu primary or a Bjorn primary, my apologies, and a Sansu as, as a second. I would definitely try these marches rather than being very defensive and going with Charles and Richard. But I know a lot of players like to be defensive. So these are very solid options. I've also seen a lot of players going with Constantine and Aetherflet so you can bring in buffs and more debuffs while Aetherflet has also a bit of AoE. Aetherflet can also go second to Richard or can also go second to Charles. So it's pretty universal commander. And by the way, if you're using Aetherflet as a second one of these marches, you don't have to do mix. You have to do just one type of truce because these commanders have infantry specialization. And if you go to the talents, you have a very important talent, which says when army led by this commander consists only of infantry units. That's very important. So you cannot have mix while Charles Martyr, Richard, Constantine, Alex, uh, Sansu, Bjorn, or whichever other commander is infantry and is leading because you will mess up with that talent. And that's a very nice and very important talent for infantry to survive more on the battlefield. A very interesting pair between Epic and Legendary that I used was with uh, Alex and Sansu. Alex being first and uh, Sansu as a second in command, it gives, it gave me some uh, surprising results because on my alt account in KVK2, there was not many options that I could have gone with on the field. So I had a max kill Alexander and I was using Sansu as a second in command and it worked phenomenal. A very, very nice pair. I used uh, Charles and Adolfled for as long as I had infantry for two marches because once I didn't, I had to drop them because I was using too much infantry. Charles and Adolfled and um, I was using Keira primary with YSG as a second and my other march was Sadin with uh, Babers for even more AoE. So there you have it, even more legendary and epics that are not related to infantry that you can use. More AoE, more uh, slow, because Babers does AoE damage and slow as well. So that was my sole purpose, to bring in the murder ball, as much AoE, AoE debuffs. Once you get into the season of conquest and uh, you still wanna use epics, my recommendation is to put them a second. That's the one time when I would 100% recommend you to hide the epics. If you want KVK 1, 2 and 3, like I said, I wouldn't hide using epics primary because with the equipment, you can empower their strength and with the 50% army expansion, you'll be all right. But once you get to the season of conquest is the crystal tech. And that's when epics are best to be used as a second. So for those times, if you still want to use like Sansu and Bjorn and various other epic commanders, you must hide them. Now, for example, you want to try a Guan Yu and Bjorn, that might be okay, but if you have an Alex, it's way better. I have tested, and Guan and Alex obviously is way better. Um, if you have a 5511 Leonidas, obviously it's better than Epics. So either you do a Guan and a Max Kill Alex or a Guan and a 5511 Leonidas and you have a very solid infantry pair. But if you just want to get the debuff from Bjorn in your team, 
which it might surprise you, but I'm going to try that in my next KVK when the seven marchers are available. And if I reach the tech with seven marchers, I plan to do Charles Martel and Bjorn on my main account just because of the debuff hitting three targets because my marchers are always focused on doing a lot of AOE damage and this will just help me. I was planning to do Charles, Martel and Tomiris because I have her max skill and the only thing I wouldn't benefit from is the Archer attack. Anything else I would benefit from using Charles Martel primary and Tomiris second. Charles Martel has infantry, has the shields and all those sort of things and uh, the mobility for my infantry because it's also max skill so I think it would have worked pretty well. I've got this march from Dragotin, just to put it out there. I've seen it at him the first time, Charles Walter and Tomiris, and I also talked with him in private, and he said that it's, it's a very nice and solid march to use, Charles and Tomiris. But I was thinking that um, it might be better if I use Bjorn to have more AoE debuffs, because my marches are all doing so much AoE. So Charles and Bjorn can be a very solid pair that you can use. But obviously, if you have Sansu, for AoE damage, Sansu is even higher value than Bjorn. So if you really want to just get as much AoE value, then you definitely want to go with Sansu. So it all depends what are the reasons of using the Epic as a second in command. And Richard can be paired with a lot of other commanders as well. But Richard and Bjorn can also work, or Richard and Sansu can also work just to bring more AoE on the field. Constantine and Bjorn can also work. And then it comes down to Alex. You're probably wondering, but why not use Alex primary? Once you get into the season of conquest, Alex is also one of those commanders that I would prefer to hide as a second in command because his defensive options are not so great. But I would put Alex primary if my other marches are all high nuking. So for example, if you use Saladin on the field, if you know you're going to use something like Artemisia, like um, Ramses, like Guan Yu, then you can definitely use Alex primary as well. So it all matters how you do your marches. Like you want to do your marches just going full damage, like full nuking, just doing a lot of skill damage. So that way you're not scared from hiding one of your marches because they will probably just swarm it down. But in the same time, you're going to deliver so much damage as well that they might have second thoughts and they might just retreat. And that way you're saving your one nuke in marches that they are trying to nuke. Or you just want to go walk all defensive. So this is the two options that you want to think about it. Because it's definitely going to make a difference. A lot of players are going in with a Genghis and double C. I'm just giving you an example. While having a Richard, a Charles Martel and a Saladin. Now you tell me. Does your opponents were really going to target your Richard or your Charles Martel or your Saladin. When you have a Genghis and a double C on the field. This is definitely not going to be the situation. So this is just an example that will help you out how to make your pairs as well. I would say that Sansu and Bjorn can definitely have a long life that you can use them as a second in command into your marchers until you reach the necessary amount of legendaries. So most likely you do your KVK 1, 2 and 3 and you can most likely use them in a, a KVK 4 as well. But after that... You need to make sure that you have enough legendaries and probably stop using the epics. From my own experience, since I started playing the game, what I have noticed is that epics are very good about one year or one year and two months, one year and three months maximum. That's the, the life of the epic commanders. Once you pass a year and three months, you need to replace them. The only few epics that are still very useful or can still have a lot of utilities after that is Joan of Arc, because that's still unique. Her buff is very, very unique. And then you have Sansu, which he with his amazing AoE, right? And uh, Bjorn. We have Bjorn now as well because uh, he's having AoE debuff. He's also infantry, has instant damage, infantry uh, stats. And if you want to go more defensive, because I was mentioning about uh, Leonidas, you can obviously put Leonidas first, and you can put an Epic as a second if you just want to bring more infantry and uh, more Epic commanders into the mix on the field. That can also work. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about these pairings? What do you think about Sansu, Bjorn, John of Arc? Do they still have a lot of utilities in Rise of Kingdoms or... 
you should not use them at all in season of conquest i would like to hear your thoughts and maybe you can give some guidance to some players who are watching this video until next time this is your boy jeroni signing off peace out here and take care see you on the next one and stay safe out there my friends Thank you.